when the pandemic broke out previous to that i mean you're you're kind of thought of as a heretic now in some strange way and pariah yeah pariah is probably a better <laughs> word and the fact that you've been banned from twitter is it's it's very confusing because i've been following your tweets and i've been reading all the things you've written and I don't understand how it justifies a ban, and I don't know what was the partic particular tweet. Did, did they tell you what the particular tweet was or what the offense was? That they never tell you. They never told you. Well, they, they just, never tell anybody. They removed you for not going along with whatever the tech narrative is, because tech clearly has uh, a censorship agenda when it comes to COVID, in terms of treatment, in terms of the... The, wh whether or not you are promoting what they would call vaccine hesitancy, they can ban you for that. They can ban you for, in, in their eyes, what they think is a justifiable offense. And they're doing this, and I don't know who these people are that are doing this, but they're doing these, this, one of the most important things about you reading out your history like that is to one of the most qualified people in the world to talk about vaccines. Well, thank you for that. I, I think that that's, so one way that some people put it, is and of course since this has happened i've been contacted by multiple lawyers that are looking at filing a suit just like alex berenson has one against twitter um and and the point is made just with what you just made uh um if so the point that i i think is kind of succinct on this is um if my voice if, it, if there's no merit to my voice being in the conversation, whether I, it's true or not, whether I'm factually correct or not, let's park that just for a minute. Whether or not I'm right in everything I say, and I freely admit, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. It's one of my core points, is people should think for themselves. And I try really hard to give people the information and help them to think, not to tell them what to think. Okay? Um... But the point is, if, if I'm not, if, if it's not okay for me to be part of the conversation, even though I'm pointing out scientific facts that may be inconvenient, then who is, who can be allowed? Um, and uh, whether you're in the camp that says, I'm a liar and I didn't invent this technology despite the patents, and there's a whole cohort of that, no one can debate that dispute that I played a major role in the creation of this tech. And virtually all other voices that have that background have conflicts of interest, financial conflicts of interest. I think I'm the only one that doesn't. I'm not getting any money out of this. So I think that it starts to touch on some fundamental constitutional principles about rights of free speech. I suspect that's kind of where you're going on that. Well, most certainly, but also how disturbing it is for someone who's not an academic like myself to watch people like you get silenced and silenced in this platform of social media where people are exchanging information they're posting up studies and you're you're discussing different parts of this pandemic that are in the news and what what the issues may lie in and where your background and your expertise allows you to explain this in a way that maybe it's not being explained because of the the narrative that's being discussed in the mainstream news and to watch you get silenced first of all to watch you get ostracized i've, I've seen that i've seen people distance themselves from you i've seen people call you a crazy person and criticize you but with no specific thing to point to it became like a tag they put on you like oh that guy like I, I i brought you up to someone and he goes oh that guy's crazy i go how so there was no answer 